Well, good afternoon. Happy Friday. And thank you for joining us today for our first virtual Rebel Recharge Lecture of 2022 and for participating in the UNLV Alumni Association's second annual Wellness Week. What a better way, what better way to kick off the new year than with dedicate, time dedicated to your overall wellness. We have a great lineup of engaging and educational talks that we are excited to share this spring. You can see our full schedule of events at engage.unlv.edu forward slash events. My name is Gabrielle Engel, and I am proud to serve as president of the UNLV Alumni Association, and it is my honor to personally welcome each of you here today. I would also like to give a special welcome and thanks to Renee rivera Delphi, coordinator for programs and events, for producing today's virtual lecture. Before we jump into today's program, mark your calendars for our next Virtual Rebel Recharge, The Process to Prosperity, scheduled for Friday, February 18th, presented by Executive Career Advancement Coach and UNLV alum Dominic Militello, class of 89. Our goal is to continue to grow our programs and events and create fun, educational, and engaging opportunities for our alumni, faculty, staff, students, and community members. Today's discussion is entitled how the power of breath can relieve your stress, presented by Kimberly Costello. Kimberly Costello is a certified yoga therapist with the International Association of Yoga Therapists. She earned her credentials after graduating from the Clinical Yoga Therapy Program at Loyola Marymount, Marymount University. She gained her clinical experience working with chronic pain patients at the Sims Mann Venice Family Clinic in Los Angeles, California. She specializes in developing chronic pain management and stress relief programs for individuals, hospitals, and clinics. In 2017, after five years of leading the wellness program for the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health, Kimberly developed a yoga therapy program for their multiple sclerosis patients. Kimberly offers an integrative approach to wellness by providing evidence-based information, strategies, and tools that can be used to develop a lifestyle program to optimize your well being. These therapeutic programs assist in managing symptoms by reducing stress, physical and emotional, improving functional ability and, and mobility, strength and flexibility, and providing education of mind body practices, including breathing techniques and meditation, that can be integrated in conjunction with your physician. Please join me in welcoming Kimberly. Gabby, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Renee and Gabby, thank you so much just for having me. I'm really excited to be here for so many reasons. Um, one, I feel like this is such an essential tool in our lives that we actually aren't even aware of. If you think about it, when are you really taught to breathe, right? Um, the other thing is, is it's shifted my life tremendously. So I really like to share this work and share what I've learned. So I'm going to go ahead and start to share some slides here. Okay. Can we see that? Okay. Are we good? Yep. Awesome. Okay, great. So the power of breath, this is one of my, I'm sharing a couple of my favorite quotes today that I've come across over the years in offering yoga, which I'll kind of talk about in a moment what yoga actually is, because I think there's such a misconception of what yoga is. But one of my favorite quotes is the preservation of health is easier than the cure for disease. So just let that sink in just for a moment. There isn't a lot that we have control over in our lives, but we do have control over how we respond to and manage our stress. And that's not always easy to do. I will honestly say it's daily work for me. It absolutely is, which is why I love sharing about this, because I think that this is something that we can all work on on a daily basis and get better at, and it will improve the quality of our life. So Let's talk about this. What are the effects of stress? I think everybody here and everybody we know experiences stress all throughout our lives, right? Different types of stress, physical, emotional, there could be financial stress. There could be stress from an illness. There are so many different things that bring stress in our life. And let's look at things that we all probably have experienced at some point in our life, maybe even currently. 
that come from stress. So fatigue, a huge one. I know we've all been exhausted at points in our lives and it's no fun. So we can talk about how we can replenish our body, how we can bring some energy back into our body when we get our stress down. Back pain and neck pain. I deal with this myself. It's not fun at all. And I mostly feel like there's so many people in life that deal with these issues. I don't know anybody that doesn't have either back or neck pain. And I actually work with a lot of people recovering with back pain and learning to manage it. So this is something that we can reduce our pain when learning to breathe in a, in a way that is really good for our body. And I'll explain that in a moment. Insomnia, headaches, gut issues, depression, and anxiety. I know these are all really familiar things to all of us. So not only can stress bring these things on, but if you already have these issues happening, stress can just exacerbate them. So it's a, it's a cycle, right? So we're going to talk about this cycle right now. So I love charts. I love visuals because I think it really shows sort of the progression of what happens. So think about when you're stressed, what you feel like, what happens in your body. Do you ever stop and notice how you're breathing? Notice if you feel a shortness in your breath, maybe you feel a tightness in the jaw, a clenching of the teeth, just different things happen for all of us when we're stressed. When we are stressed, especially when we're chronically stressed, we're dealing with ongoing stress. This puts us in our sympathetic nervous system, which we've all heard of, I'm sure, is our fight or flight, which is a necessary aspect of our nervous system for survival, right? To react, to respond, to protect. But if we live in this more often than we are balanced, and by balance, I mean, we're also accessing our parasympathetic nervous system, which is more that rest and digest. It causes more stress, more exhaustion. You can see that you go from stress to your fight or flight to decreased breathing. So your breath becomes short, rapid. It stays more in your chest and you're not getting the full capacity of breath, which makes us more stressed. This can lead to inflammation in the body. That inflammation can surface as again, back, neck pain, fatigue, some other kind of an underlying illness, maybe that it can bring forth. And of course, all those other things that I mentioned, digestive issues, anxiety, depression, insomnia. So you can kind of see this is a little cycle here and it all kind of works together. So then we land at our chronic issues. So what does it look like when we start examining how to relieve our stress? So relieving our stress, which I will talk about how that breath can help us get there, gets us into more of that rest and restore, digest and replenish that parasympathetic aspect of the nervous system, which again, when you're in stress mode, you're not accessing the parasympathetic system. That's the calming aspect. That's when we feel like, right? Like we're relaxing. So that then improves the quality of our breath. And what do I mean by improve? And what do I mean by quality of breath? So improving means we're slowing our breath down. We're lengthening our breath. We're learning to use the entire diaphragm for the breath, the entire system. So when we breathe, typically what happens for a lot of us is we're short breaths, rapid breaths, and we're sitting in our chest, what we call chest breathing. And we also have what we call reverse breathing, where we're drawing in on the inhale and we're pushing out on the exhale. So what's interesting about that, again, because we didn't learn to breathe at any time of our life, that when you take an inhale naturally in your life without any effort, your diaphragm descends down. On descension of the diaphragm, everything pushes out. There goes your belly, your ribs, your chest. That's flowing with your body, with your diaphragm. When you take an exhale, your diaphragm, again, on its own, without your effort, descends back up. That's the softening in of belly, ribs, and chest. So think about if we don't breathe with our body. We're fighting our body. So then our breath is shortened and we're kind of running into our own system. And that is going to shorten the breath. 
cause more stress. That also has not just the physical feeling of stress and what it feels like when we're fatigued or we ache, tightens muscles. So if you come into it with already having back pain, neck pain, or tight hamstrings, tight hips. So think if you're not breathing with ease, all of that actually gets tighter and more intense. So as we improve the quality of our breath, we will see decreased inflammation. And again, inflammation surfaces as different things in everyone's body. And when we get our inflammation down, we feel an increase in the improve, in improvement in the quality of our life. So again, these cycles that you see, I'm going to go back to that because I just, I love looking at that because it's just a reminder of how this flows. So again, we have our stress, we get into our sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight, our breathing decreases, shortens, we have inflammation increasing, and we can have any of those chronic issues that I mentioned. And then again, when we get into our stress relief, it starts to look a little bit better. So I don't know about you, but I want to hang out in the second chart, right? <laughs> that feels better to me. So even just an example of how the breath can change. I love actually speaking and lecturing. It's something I do on a regular basis, but still right before we're about to go on and talk, I, I pause, I take a deep breath. I notice how I'm feeling because I know I get excited. I start talking fast, my breath starts getting a little shortened and faster just in those moments. So envision for a moment what happens when you're stressed. Maybe you have a deadline at work. Maybe you're rushing around trying to get everything into the day. You're going from taking care of the family, the household, your career, getting groceries, cooking dinner, you know, all the regular stuff we all do all day long, life maintenance, right? Everyone gets stressed. And whether we show it outwardly or it's something that we take on inwardly, stress exists. So stress changes how we breathe and how we breathe can change our stress. So what can we do to lower our stress? So right here, I'm going to say this over and over three to five minutes of daily breathing. And I know sometimes we get really busy and we think, how are we going to fit this in? Like, I don't have more time, right? For one more thing. So I always say, just start with a few minutes. Maybe you start with two minutes. Maybe you start with three. When you notice the amazing effects of breathing, you'll actually want to do it for longer. And then all of a sudden it's five minutes and you'll think, oh, maybe I'll stay here for 10 minutes. This feels really good. Because when do we really rest other than lying in our bed at night and sleeping? That's very different, right? That's just more going to bed. We we're exhausted and we're getting ready for the next day. It's not a real pause. It's not an examination of our breath, of how the stress is affecting us in our lives. So pause and notice your breath during times of stress. Again, what happens for you? Do you feel a clenching of the jaw and the teeth, a tightness? Do you feel it in your neck? Do you feel it in your lower back, your upper back? What do you notice? And are you breathing slowly? Focus on lengthening and slowing your breath. This is not easy. And I'm going to kind of circle back to yoga here because for most people, yoga is physical postures. And I was actually mentioning to Renee before we started, I still have a lot of family members in my life that think I just teach poses all day long, <laughs> which is funny, but that's okay. It's just not necessarily understanding that there's more to it. Yoga was actually developed from a sense of mindfulness. It's really about the breath. It's about getting in tune with ourselves. It's about feeling more of ease in our lives, whatever that means for you. We often hear terms like grounded, things like that in yoga, but I wanna say, what does grounded mean to you? How do you feel when you feel grounded or connected? And again, what do those words mean? Those are powerful words, grounded and connected. So I look at it more as I feel good. I don't feel as stressed. I feel calmer. Those are the words more that I like to refer to. So yoga does have a lot of physical postures that we can practice, but this is more about the breath because the root, the core of yoga is breathing. So if you can breathe, you're doing yoga. It's not about doing a down dog, a plank, a warrior one, all those fantastic poses that by the way, can be modified to meet any body in any situation. 
those poses have physical benefits. They, they do, they can help strengthen the body. They can help increase our flexibility, improve our balance. But if you're not breathing, you're just doing exercise. Essentially, you're not doing yoga. So again, if you can breathe, you can do yoga and all you have to do is breathe. So that's what yoga is for me. So let's come back to the breath. When we learn to lengthen and slow our breath down, that's when we're going to start to notice a sense of ease, a difference in our stress, a calming. So longer exhalations, what's great about this exhalations are seen from a yoga perspective, typically a calming and cooling. So notice how you respond though. I can tell you that you're going to feel a calmness and a coolness when you do an exhalation, but you still have to check in with your body and notice how it feels for you. But it's very good for anxiety because that's the calming and the, the ease versus an inhalation is more about warming and energizing. And that's more about if we're kind of having a day where we're a little down, we're feeling a little depressed and we need to just kind of like boost ourselves up. I would focus more on the inhalation. So the nice thing about this is there's a lot of different breathing techniques in yoga, and that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, but it's good to know that we have access and to different types of breathing techniques to help us in different situations. If you want to feel the idea of I'm feeling ease and balance, you match your inhale to your exhale. And we're going to play with that because this is a lot to take in and it doesn't happen overnight. Often people will say to me, it's so much easier to do the poses than it is to the, do the breathing. Isn't that interesting? Because there are a lot of complicated poses in yoga that we've all seen because we only see the really pretty intricate poses that look really hard, right? And that's not what yoga is about. So isn't it interesting that it, the breathing is where people feel that they're challenged because aren't we breathing all day long? Yeah, but no right? Because it's not something we have to put effort into, but when you learn to put effort into your breath, which we're going to do here shortly, because that's the best part of this, you'll notice what that feels like for you and why this is so powerful. So again, just some ideas here, just to kind of plant the seed that the exhale is a little bit more calming and cooling and the inhale is a little bit more energizing and warming. So just notice how you feel when you breathe in and out, just start there. That's your baseline. That's all you have to do. Mindful movement and breathing is a yoga practice again. So mindful to me is checking in with your body every time you need to do a little bit of movement, whatever it is. I do a lot of corporate yoga. We do yoga in a chair where you get up and you move very gently. We're not getting down onto the mat. It's very simple things you can do at your desk. You take five to 15 minutes and just relieve some of your tension and your stress and kind of reset and get yourself sort of you know, kind of replenished throughout the day. So mindfulness is just noticing how we feel in our body and what we need in each moment. And again, breathing, that's yoga. Do one thing that makes you happy every day and brings you ease. I think this is really, really important because we forget about ourselves. We forget about self-care. We get busy. And again, we're like, there's no time for that. I get that way too sometimes. So again, that's why I'm here. All right. So I talked about quality of breath. I always say this, notice the quality of your breath, but I really want to be clear again, what that means. We want our breath to feel like it's bringing us ease. It's working for us and it's working with us. So breathing slowly, deeply, it allows us to have a little bit more insight into our stress to notice what's going on. Think about those pauses you know, when you take time just to sort of check in and notice how you're feeling versus an instant reaction to something. Breathing for our body and with our diaphragm, which again, I'm going to explain a little bit more. We're going to feel that in our own bodies supports our nervous system. And we need that support to function, right? To feel ease, to feel balanced, to feel calmer. And again, that's stress relief teaches us to let go of our distractions. And again, this is what yoga is essentially is if you can just let your distractions aside, which sounds a little bit like meditation, right? So meditation is again, it's mindfulness, just like breathing is it's just checking in. It's just noticing what's happening. It doesn't mean you can turn everything off. It just means you can slow things down a little bit and maybe just put things aside temporarily stress reduction. That's what we're here for. Right. Okay. 
So I want to talk about, again, how we normally breathe. I do a lot of breathing assessments when I work one-on-one -on -one with clients or when I've been in a clinical setting to notice how they're breathing because most people are chest breathers. And again, that means we're not using our belly and our ribs. And think about this. We've got front side back ribs. That's a lot to cover. So if we're including that in the breathing, that expansion, we're going to get more breath. So when people are in a chronic state of stress or a chronic state of pain, chest breathing is pretty much automatic because the body is stressed like this all the time, right? We're tightened. So even if you have, maybe you're not in pain, but you're stressed or your tension, where do you hold it? Do you hold it in your neck? Do you hold it in your shoulders? Again, do you hold it in your lower back? It's different for everybody. You can feel tightness in your hips, your hamstrings. It can be anywhere. When we have that going on, there's not a lot of room to breathe, right? Just look at me. This doesn't look comfortable. I'm like clenching my fist and tightening, right? So where's the breath? How's the breath? Reverse breathing again is when we breathe in opposition to our diaphragm. So we want to breathe with our body, right? That makes the most sense to me because why create resistance, right? Why create shorter breaths? So we're going to learn how to examine if we are chest breathers, if we're reverse breathers, which again is pulling in on the inhale, that's reverse breathing and drawing out on the exhale. So it's opposite of how we really should breathe. Rapid and short breaths, really common. I get this way too. I'm racing around trying to get stuff done and I get stressed out and I pause and kind of have to giggle because, well, this is what I do. <laughs> so, all right. So let's look at breathing techniques. Your baseline, where you're going to come back to every time is checking in and allowing yourself to breathe in and out through the nose. So it's not wrong to breathe in and out through the mouth, but if we learn to breathe in and out through the nose, even just at periods of time in our day and are pretty consistent with it, we'll notice that because in and out through the nose, it's a smaller airway than the mouth. It automatically slows things down. So it's not just about learning to push out on the inhale, soften in on the exhale, and really expand when I say push out. It's learning to breathe in and out through the nose. That doesn't come easy for most of us. It takes time. I definitely feel like the movement aspect came easier to me than the breathing did. But I mean, I'm a type A, I'm a perfectionist. It was like, I was always holding my breath. So Learning to breathe in and out through the nose is definitely took some time. So it will. So again, we breathe in and out through the nose. We expand belly, ribs, and chest on our inhalation. And we soften and empty out that breath, chest, ribs, and belly on our exhalation. The inhalation is what we take on in our lives. So I'm going to ask you to notice if it's easier for you to breathe in or if it's easier for you to breathe out. So again, I'm somebody that like piles, piles, piles on my plate. I've learned that that's not the best thing for me stress-wise, but because of that, my inhale has always come, e come easier to me. And the exhale has been more challenging. And the exhale is the release, what we're able to let go of in our lives. So who doesn't want more of that, right? I'm always working on that one. So again, my suggestion is to begin your day with five minutes of breathing. And if you can... And once you start to recognize how it feels for you, you will probably want to end your day with five minutes of breathing. Think about it. You set the tone for your day, right? We kind of fresh start every day, get this in a positive mindset. And then you come home, you end your day, close everything out and just sort of decompress with that breathing. And one more thing that is very important, and I work, work on posture with everyone that I work with, this is one of the most important things I can share with you, improve your posture. So we're all going to do a little posture check together, if you're willing. So I'm sitting here in a chair, I'm here to see me scoot forward a little bit, so that my feet are planted on the ground. So if you can do that, I'm going to invite you to bring your feet hip width apart. So that if you were to look down, you would have your hips in line with your knees and your knees stacked over your ankles. And then just notice your feet. Can you just kind of evenly distribute the weight into the feet? I know we, most of us probably have shoes on. So just kind of envision, do you tend to turn in? Do you tend to turn out? So trying to just evenly put the weight into the feet. 
And then think about if you're in a chair and you can, I'm going to scoot forward a little bit. You're seeing me do that and just kind of move around so that I'm not relying on the chair like this. And I'm just, because then I'm in a hunched position. So two things. One, when we're not practicing good posture, it puts a lot of load on our spine and we don't want more stress on our spine because that creates pain, right? And that makes it easier for injury to be quite honest in the discs in our spine. The other thing about good posture, think about it. When you sit up tall, you relax the shoulders, you let the shoulders drop back versus rounding, which is really common for all of us. And then I know if I'm at my computer, I have to remind myself like, okay, sit up tall, can really drop the shoulders down, right? The taller you are in your spine, the length, the easier it is to breathe. Because if you think about this, the breath is going to get like stuck here, right? And I'm going to run into myself. There's not space to breathe. Now it's me grow up and relax down. The other thing I'm going to ask you to think about is can you stack your head over your spine? So it's impossible for us to stay like this all day long. But what I will offer for you to notice is that however you sit is how you stand is how you walk. And that's also how you exercise. So if you were to come in and do yoga with me or practice a pose at home or anything like that, whatever your posture is like in these moments, it's going to be the same in all of those movements that you do. So when you're doing a lunge and you're doing squats and whatever exercise is your thing, think about your posture because it carries with you all throughout your life. So Posture, really important, again, for protecting, supporting, and keeping a healthy spine, but helping us breathe better. And another thing is, notice when you get stressed, how your posture changes. So it all works together here. All right, here's what, this is what we're here for. Let's breathe. Let's do some breathing. So again, quick posture check, if you will. Feet hip width apart. Sit up tall. Try not to rely on anything to hold your spine up, which will feel like a little bit of work initially because we have to use those muscles, the abdominals, the spinal muscles to keep us up nice and tall. If it's comfortable for you, I'll offer for you to close your eyes with me and then maybe just relax your hands onto the tops of your thighs or anything else that's comfortable for you. And just take a few moments without changing anything. Notice your breath. When it's comfortable, can you allow yourself to take the breath in and out through the nose? If you ever need to open the mouth for the exhalation, just think about making a little softer exhale. You're welcome to place your hands on your belly. This is a nice way to sort of get in tune with how the breath is moving in the body. As you begin to take that inhale through the nose, when you're ready, let the belly expand out into the fingertips. When you're ready to empty out that breath through the nose, let the belly soften away from the fingertips. So if you're moving the belly more towards your spine, Still staying nice and tall. And stay with that for the next few breaths. Find a pace that feels easy. It feels natural and fluid for you. Again, we're taking that breath in through the nose as we expand the belly. And out through the nose as we soften the belly. So always about finding a pace and a rhythm for our breath. It feels good for us. Knowing that the breath changes at all times throughout the day, depending on how we're feeling, what we're doing. Are we still? Are we moving? Are we stressed? Are we relaxed? As you continue with a pace that feels good for you, when it's comfortable, start to think about, can you on the inhale expand belly and ribs? Thinking about you're expanding out from front to back, from side to side. Again, we have these front side back ribs to assist us. 
And when you exhale, you feel the ribs and the belly soften again away from the fingertips. Still trying to maintain the idea of sitting up tall, gently pressing down through your feet to give you that support. See what you notice without changing anything. Again, we're just breathing in and out through the nose. It's a little more familiar for our chest to expand. So think about putting, we call a three-part breath, putting three parts together, the full expansion of the breath so that you feel belly, ribs, and chest on the inhale, expanding. and emptying out and softening chest, ribs, and belly on your exhale. And again, can you stay with that? Notice where there's ease and where there's effort in your breath. And just observe, don't worry about changing anything, don't judge how you're feeling or what you're noticing. It's just learning and gaining some insight into how we breathe. And again, staying with that. Think about slowing that breath down. Now, if you can, notice how many counts you're breathing in and breathing out for. Again, there's no right or wrong to this. It's just observation. It's just us learning about our bodies. So maybe naturally a count in and out feels comfortable for you. And maybe you over time work to two counts in and two counts out. But we're not forcing it. We're just allowing it to happen which is why it's a practice. You'll also maybe notice if it's easier to take an inhale or an exhale. Reminding ourselves the more we're able to focus on our exhalation, the more we're able to shift into the idea of releasing, calming, cooling, letting go. So when you need more of that, take longer exhalations with a natural, comfortable inhalation. So if you're comfortable with a count in and out, maybe think about a count in and two counts out. So again, we can shift into longer exhalations, the release letting go. So we're just taking a little bit of a longer ratio on the exhale. So it could be a count in, two counts out. And we over time work up to adding a count to both the breath in and out with the focus on a longer exhalation. And again, just to continue focusing on finding a natural pace, expand on our inhale, belly, ribs, and chest. Soften and empty out that breath on the exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Let's see if we can take about five more breaths like this.
take a moment to pause and just to ask yourself what you noticed and taking time to focus more on your breath and reassure yourself that whatever you've noticed, whatever you observed is fine. Again, there's no judging, no right or wrong. It's just learning some additional tools and what we can provide more of for ourselves. So if your eyes are closed, let's slowly blink the eyes open. Take a moment. Does anyone wanna share anything that they noticed? You're welcome to. It's always really exciting for me to see, you know, what we learn in breathing and just know that different things come up at different times. So one day you might feel like you're struggling a little bit. Other days you might feel like, ah, oh, I got this breathing thing down, right? <laughs> Any I'll thoughts? Jump in. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, I practice yoga on a regular basis, but I, I will say breathing is definitely the more difficult part. So just sitting still, being mindful, you know, it's blocking out all those distractions. Um, so you really have to put a lot of effort towards it, but also relax at the same time. So it, it is, challenging, yeah. but it's needed. Absolutely. It, it is. Thank you so much for sharing and for saying that. And something that you said actually brings up a good point that I don't want to forget to share. So thank you. The idea of in the beginning, you're working so hard to breathe and relax that I've had people say, how am I relax? How is this relaxing? Such a good question and a very good point. <laughs> so there are ways to support the body other than sitting. I did sitting with you guys today, just because it made sense for the environment. And it's nice to know that if you're sitting at your desk and working, you can pause and take a posture break and a breathing break. If I were to recommend, and you were just starting out, one of my favorite things to do, honestly, and I think it's the most comfortable, at least to me. And I found in a lot of my clients and groups that I work with laying on the back, honestly, just you let the weight of the spine lay down to the floor and just empty down to the floor. And you'll notice like how much you carry in your body all day long and how exhausting it is just to hold up the weight of the head all day long. If you've heard the example, maybe some of you that it's the head is the equivalent, the weight of a bowling ball. So every time like we move our head out of our natural state of the curves of our spine and stacking the spine and supporting, we add a few pounds to that. And again, that's why we have tension our shoulders and our neck. And you'll see people like rolling their neck all day long and rolling their shoulders, trying to get like shake out all the tension. When you lay down on your back and I don't mean when you get in bed at night, cause that's just completely different, right? Cause the idea is just to conk out. You feel what's going on in your spine. You feel the curves of your spine. You feel where you carry tension, where you carry weight. But you can also, my favorite thing to do is to put something under the backs of the knees, whether it's a chair and you elevate your legs, one, you get a, a little inversion out of it, which inversions are fantastic as far as just increasing the circulation in our body. And to me, an inversion is putting your legs on a chair, not a headstand, not a handstand. I think that's great for, you know, its own purposes, but that's not what inversions are for me. Inversion is lay still, place your legs at 90 degrees on a seat of a chair, lay with your legs at a wall. You get a little hamstring stretch too. lay even in your bed. I like doing it on the floor because you can feel the difference with the floor versus your mattress and put a long pillow or rolled blankets under your knees. You can elevate your legs as high or low as you want. First of all, it typically takes pressure off of your lower spine. Um, depending on if you have any spinal issues going on, but that's a whole nother thing that I could always offer uh, suggestions on, but then you can just let the body relax. The more you're not holding your body, the easier it is to breathe. Cause think about like, we're sitting here and we're like, am I staying tall? Am I staying stacked? Are my shoulders relaxed? Is my head over my spine? You know, and you're focusing on that. And then you're like, Oh wait, am I breathing? Am I going in and out through the nose? Did I expand on the inhale? Did I relax? It's a lot of work and to think about. So until you have a breathing practice, it's a regular thing for you. And you're really comfortable with it. Do it on your back and get comfortable with it. Try it at night you know, when you can kind of relax and let things go. And then also you could always support head 
and whole spine. So your head and heart, chest, back are all in the same plane. I do like a long pillow or yoga bolster, we call it. It opens up the chest and the back and the ribs and it allows you to feel all that spaciousness in the ribs and in the chest and you can feel the breath moving a little bit more. So there's a couple great ways to really support us so that breathing is, is comfortable and enjoyable. But once you get to a point where you can relax enough, the breathing becomes amazing. So um, I hope that that helps because I really want for you all to notice that this is something you could integrate very easily. You just have to find what works, which is really um, how I'm going to close here today is creating a daily routine. Sometimes the hardest thing we can do, um, I'm going to say this, especially for females, self-care is so important. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's the most essential tool we have. The most powerful tool we have is our breath, but the, one of the most essential tools is, is self-care. And to me, taking time to breathe is self-care. It could be a walk. It could be reading a book spending time, you know, with someone that makes you happy, whatever it is that, you know, makes you feel good, but just new habits take usually about, you know, 30 days to integrate. So give yourself some time to integrate five minutes a day and see what happens just five minutes. And you'll notice a change very quickly. So just small steps each day. And of course, create a routine that's feasible that you're able to incorporate very easily into your day so that you don't feel like you had to pile one extra chore on your plate because who needs it? And this will leave a positive imprint. imprint. So one qu last quote, this is from one of my mentors and teachers. And I think this is one of the most beautiful ways to describe yoga and what I have received from it. We practice yoga, not to keep the bad things from happening, but to have the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual resources to recover quickly and well when they do. So um, any thoughts or questions or um, I'm, I'm open, I'm here, I love discussing. Um, so please feel free to unmute yourself if you do have any questions for Kimberly. No questions. <laughs> That's okay. So I hope that you will find a way, sorry, Renee, um, to just take a few minutes of time in your day, whenever it works for you and just, you know, check in with your breath again, check in with your posture. I'm doing it again because I was starting to get comfortable and I'm like, you know, slouching. So come back to how am I feeling in my body? What happens when I'm stressed? What do I notice? And can I just take a few minutes, even if it's two minutes, just to slow the breath down. And again, if you only remember just a few things from what I'm saying today, because it's a lot of information, breathe in and out through your nose, breathe slowly, deeply, and think about expand belly, ribs, and chest on your inhale, soften chest, ribs, belly on your exhale. And if you stick with those few things, it'll go a very, very long way. It doesn't have to be super complicated. After all, it is breathing, right? So thank you, Renee and Gabby for having me. I love sharing the power of breath and ways that we can create additional tools just to keep in our toolbox every day to relieve stress. It's really important. So we have so much stress in our lives today, you know, especially the last two years. So anything we can do to support ourselves and each other, you know, let's do it. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you so much. I think this is very helpful and simple, useful tools for us to put into practice daily and just to put a pause because I agree we've had a lot of stress over the past couple of years and this is a really great way for us to do a little bit of self-care. So thank you, Kimberly, for joining us today and uh, I hope to continue the conversations and continue our wellness week uh, from year to year and just expanding on those programs. So thank you again. Thank you.